Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. morning welcome you all to this lecture in this course on analytical spectral and microscopy applications of inorganic compounds and nanomaterials in the past uh, couple of classes we have been looking at uh, the spectra related to the x-ray electron so xps x-ray photoelectron spectroscopy uh, we have learned the basic concepts so that the electrons can come from the core level electrons can come from the uh, the uh, the bond bonding levels as well. So, so depending upon the kind of a, a radiation that you use, if you use a high energy radiation like X radiation, you can expect the core electrons. If you use a little less energetic radiation like UV radiation or high energy UV radiation, or between X radiation and UV radiation, you can get the uh, the molecular level uh, or the uh, bonded bonding electrons etc and then you can use uv further uh, for those so depending upon the the binding strengths of the electrons that we use a different kind of a radiations and then we get different uh, uh, levels of information particularly about the species which is present on the surface uh, and its chemical environment because the the xps chemical shift depends upon the chemical environment uh, or with respect to that even if you are looking at 1s or 2p or 3d any of these things. Also we have looked at in the previous uh, class a uh, lot of examples of uh, you know organic systems wherein we can rationalize the, the binding energies based on the, uh, the positive character that it gets in other words positive oxidation state and what kind of a atoms are attached to the central atom what what is under consideration in terms of their electron withdrawing and in other words the electronegativity species that are being added to that so in that for example we have looked at the the simple uh, the sp3 type of a carbon 1s versus the sp2 type of a carbon then a carbon which is attached with a nitrogen carbon which is attached with a oxygen by single bond carbon which is attached with a carbon oxygen with a double bond so all these kinds of things that we have seen they make uh, the the binding energy stronger and stronger uh, so that is how you can analyze and these peak areas can be used for comparing their uh, relative concentrations one can do uh, a broad scan uh, kind of a survey spectrum to give all the elements present in the in the compound and then you can take one particular element and one particular kind of a shell suppose carbon carbon most often studied is 1s you can also study 2p but there is no use of that nitrogen similar thing 1s and occasionally 2p sulfur most often 2p as compared to 1s so as you keep going to the transition metals you can study uh, 3p or 2p or 3d all of these so you always have to be very cautious when you compare these uh, uh, these uh, energies you should compare with the same uh, electron coming from the same orbital so you cannot compare with a 1s orbital binding energy with a 2p orbital binding energy or a 3d orbital binding energy so when you are comparing 3d all 3d when you are comparing 2p all should be the 2p and the 1s etc i hope that makes uh, brings a clarity uh, to every one of us to understand how to analyze these compounds so now as we have seen some organic systems uh, like simple organic molecules some organic polymers then we have looked at some, at some when you do some kind of a reactions they, they form products and by looking at the product uh, one of the spectra for example i have looked at the nitrogen spectra you can analyze what kind of a products are formed in that under such reaction conditions now let us move on to the inorganic compounds so I draw your attention to this particular slide. Uh, kindly have a look at the slide, please. Now, in this slide, we have silicon 
2 p and silicon can be in the plus 1 of course can be in the 0 the plus 1 the plus 2 the plus 3 plus 4 oxidation state if you take different kinds of compounds it does not matter then you can see very in an approximate manner this plus 1 is coming somewhere around 100 the plus 2 is coming around 102 and then plus 3 around 103 plus 4 around 104 plus etc. You can see that the binding energies do vary and the binding energy increases considerably as you go from the lower oxidation state to a higher oxidation state. So, the binding energy increases as the oxidation state increases. So, that is roughly that the take home message from this particular the graph or the plots or the XPS spectra values. Now, look at on the top right panel on the same slide. So, you can see that there are different types of uh, fluorides a silicon without any fluoride, silicon with one fluoride, with two fluorides, with three fluorides, or four fluorides. So, which means silicon in the 0, 1 plus, 2 plus, and then 3 plus, and then 4 plus. So, equivalent to that, that is what you are looking at. Now, if you take these corresponding binding energies and make a plot, and keeping the oxidation state on the x axis and uh, the, the potential with respect to the 0, the shift that is called uh, the shift with respect to 0. So, there is a binding energy difference, binding energy shift of that uh, silicon. So, here you are, we are looking at the silicon, I think 2p. So, therefore, that is where we are comparing. So, the silicon you are taking it as 0 because you are subtracting silicon minus silicon, then 0 silicon subtracted from the SIF 1, SIF 2, SIF 3 etcetera. You see very nicely. So, roughly 1 electron volt difference 2 electron volts, 3 electron volts and a little bit higher than 4 electron volts. So, very nicely titrating with that. So, please uh, look at the slide. So, so, you can see. So, that means you can use this as a standard curve and now you can identify if you have an unknown uh, kind of a compound you can see what level of positive character what level of you know oxidation state level of character is there with the silicon in that particular compound at least for fluoride based compounds. You can use this exactly for the fluoride, but otherwise you can use as a guideline for other ones. Now, let us look at uh, hope you understood that. So, we have seen this uh, a general plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 specific examples SIF 1, SIF 2, SIF 3, SIF 4. Now, look at a couple of more uh, things silicon around 99.4, these are all for silicon 2 p only. Then S i carbon S i c 100.3 around 1 electron volt higher and then you take silicon nitrogen 101.7 about 1 and a half to or 2 you know electron volts increase uh, from with respect to S i 0. Then you go to S i O 2, S i O 2 is gives almost about 4 electron volts uh, difference higher. So, go from silicon 0 to uh, I hope you are looking at the values on the slide which are given in this particular uh, small table here. So, you can see silicon 0 to silicon carbon to silicon nitride to silicon dioxide etcetera. So, you can see different silicon sil siloxanes will go a big range will be there you do not need to too much worry about that. Now, so essentially what you are seeing is the silicon 97, 98 in that range you could see here 98 point. So, and then silicon with carbon and probably silicon with uh, nitrogen, sil silicon with oxygen, sil silicon with dioxide. So, you can see the binding energy keeps increasing uh, as you. So, it exactly goes well. I hope you understood this particular slide very well the data I am giving you like in a tutorial class. So, please keep a good track of what I am uh, talking about and then do a little home exercise after the listen to this class. Okay, let us look at uh, another uh, then in the next slide I have given some transition metal oxides primarily. So, I draw your attention to the top uh, left uh, panel uh, of this particular slide which is on the iron oxides with the iron 2 p uh, x p spectra. You can see that the iron oxide with that means Fe 2 plus and Fe 2 O 3 roughly Fe 3 plus. So, you can see that it is increasing kind of a thing. Now, if you look at the uh, the chromium also you can see the chromium oxide, the chromium with the 6 oxide CrO 3 means 6 plus CrO 3 means 3 plus 
and etc. And so you can see all of them. So the chromium 0, 574, chromium 3 oxide, 575.71.5 electron volt, chromium 3 hydroxide, and chromite, lower nickel chromite, and then oxo species with the chromium 6, chromium 6 oxides. So as you go to the chromium 6, the value go shoot, shoots up by about 4, 5 or more electron volts as compared to chromium 0. So again you can see a trend. What is the trend you are seeing? As the chromium oxidation state increases, the chromium 2p level, the uh, binding energy increases. Now let us try to understand by looking at a few more and kindly look at the middle panel on this particular slide which is something to do with the niobium. So niobium data with the red is the, the experimental data and this is being fitted with uh, various species and you can see the, the niobium metal close to something like 202 in that range of the electron volts and then you have uh, uh, the niobium with one oxide, niobium with uh, uh, NbO2 that is niobium 4 plus giving both these kind of peaks and then you have the niobium 5 because this is uh, O5 means uh, minus 10 so niobium 2 plus 5. So these two are coming from niobium 5, these two are coming from niobium 4 and these are coming from niobium 2 plus and this is coming from niobium 0. So you can see that as you go from niobium 0 to niobium 2 plus to 4 plus to 5 plus again the same trend. So that means as the as the oxidation state of the niobium center increases that you have a metal binding energies uh, increase. So you can see all of them very clearly here some niobium carbide etc is given you do not need to worry about it. Okay, so you have something on the manganese which is the 3s spectra here. So the manganese oxide is the gray one here manganese oxo hydroxo is has a manganese 3 plus which is a green one here MnO2 this is from that uh, ore ranciate that has a manganese 4 plus which is the, the black one here and then the red one which is overlapping here with the dot and that is the, the overall measured spectrum. So you can get different components of the manganese uh, O which is somewhat 2 plus and manganese O hydroxide somewhat 3 plus and manganese oxide which is 4 plus. So you can see 2 plus, 3 plus, 4 plus again increasing in the binding energies. So we have seen that in all these cases the transition metal that we have as the oxidation state increases that you have a the binding energy but ensure that you are comparing the binding energy of the same kind of an orbital. Here it is a 3p in, uh, in the other case here is a 2p etc and chromium is 2p and all these kinds of things that you have. Now let us look at an overall with a 2p, you do not need to worry about the subscript as I mentioned earlier. So scandium with the scandium oxide with the 3 plus 398 becomes 401.9 which is around 3 and a half electron volts increase. Now you see vanadium, you take it as vanadium in zero state 512, V2O3 is that 3 plus that is 515.8 VO2 that is vanadium 4 plus and then V2O5 vanadium 5 plus. So 0, 3 plus, 4 plus, 5 plus we have already. So in for vanadium also the same kind of thing. Then if you look to the uh, look at the manganese, I hope you are looking at the table that I am showing on the, on the slide. I am also using the cursor, please follow that. So manganese uh, 0, 639, manganese oxide 640.5, manganese dioxide. So this is 2 plus this is 4 plus, so 0, 3, 2 plus, 4 plus, so going from 639 to 642 more than 3 electron volts. So iron again 0, 2 plus, 3 plus, cobalt 0, 2 plus. So all the cases without any exception, you find that the oxidation state increases for the metal ion, uh, you have the binding energy increasing. So now for an unknown, you can take the spectrum, you deconvolute identify, assign and take the area and get the composition. So you can get so in minerals etc, a lot of composites etc, you have different species present in the same mixture, same composite. So that is why you use the word composite. It has 
uh, more than one compound in that. So those can be established by all of this. I hope you got that. Let us move on to the next slide. On the next slide, we have uh, something on the left panel vertical. Kindly see the slide, please. Then you have some molybdenum oxide kind of things. So MO, Fe, oxides, etc., sulfides. Then you have a MO, which is the zero. Then you can see these two peaks. This is a 3D level. All of them are 3D. And then you increase to MnO2, that is, uh, sorry, MOO2, that is 4 plus. So you can see there is a shift in both these peaks. This peak, this peak is shifted. Then you go to MOO3, which is 6 plus. Again, this is shifted, this is shifted. So the same pair of peaks are shifted for plus 4, shifted further for the plus 6. So you're going from somewhere around, uh, let us say, 227, 228 to around. Uh, 232, 233. So, that is a quite good shift you can see and very much in line with what we have seen in the earlier slides. Okay, now let us look at some iron based ones here. So, the iron, this is the exponential spectrum which is being fitted with these, all these and these are made color because so that you can easily see iron 2 with the sulfur with the green, the iron 2 sulfur satellites are these dashed ones, then we do not need to so much worry then iron 3 sulfide with the blue. So, these are the ones. So, iron 2 sulfide is coming here, iron 3 sulfide is coming over there. So, now if you have a ore, if you have a some composite, you can find out. So, what extent of iron 2 species are there, what extent of iron 3 species are there. If it is oxo, also you can analyze. If they are sulfide, you can analyze. If there is something else, also you can analyze. And the deconvoluted spectra will give you the uh, intensities. Yeah, uh, again draw your attention onto the slide again this particular uh, the table uh, which is shown for the sulfur 2 peak. So, not from the metal side, but this is from the ligand side the sulfur uh, present in these things 2 p of that. Now, if you see copper sulfide, uh, these are all uh, different uh, ores, covilite, chalcosite, etc. So, 162.1 and there is copper is in the 2 plus here and see copper in the 4 plus kind of thing. So, you have uh, uh, all these things which are being no this is S 2 2 minus this is this is also same this is S 2 minus this is S 2 2 minus. So, both are copper is 2 plus only and that is why you have close value in that iron sulfur, iron sulfur, sulfide other things copper iron sulfide etcetera you can see. So, similarly all of these. Now, on the right panel of this particular slide, there is a XPS spectra given on the left side is the molybdenum 3D, all these three top to bottom, and the right side is a sulfur 2P top to bottom. Now, what is the reaction done here is sulfur to molybdenum is mixed and makes molybdenum sulfides in different ratios. For example, sulfur to molybdenum 3.07, here sulfur to molybdenum 2.7, that means molybdenum ratio is increasing because denominator is increasing, therefore, the New value is decreasing. Then sulfur to molybdenum is 1.53, that means molybdenum is increasing. In other words, you can say the sulfur content is decreasing. As you go from this to this to this, the sulfur content is decreasing, the molybdenum content is increasing. That means the compounds that are formed with this ratio at that particular experimental conditions, which I have not give, given here, some heating, other things will be there at that conditions those different kinds of those different types of compounds are formed. So, what kind of compounds? Molybdenum 4 plus compounds, 5 plus compounds, 6 plus compounds. If you come this side, you can see sulfur with oxygen, sulfide, disulfide bridging, epical sulfide uh, that is S22 minus, terminal S22 minus and unsaturated S2 minus. So, all these kinds of species are formed to different ratios. So, please now look at this particular slide, I am uh, focusing on this. So, as you go from here to here, so what you would see, you would see that the, the lines of the green one started increasing in that uh, from uh, here to here and here some overlap or other kind of species. Uh, then the blue ones, it is a greater here, it reduced here, it reduced further. So, uh, that means, the very high oxidation states of molybdenum 
is reduced compounds compounds of high molybdenum oxidation state of 6 plus are reduced on going from this plot to this plot ratio to this ratio ok. So, the green one 5 plus so the 5 plus increases from here to here ok and then 4 plus so this is the orange -ish one the 4 plus here and a little increase much more increase the 4 plus and the 5 plus are increasing the 6 plus are decreasing. Now, if you come on the right side, what kind of a sulfide species? You can see that these are terminal S2, 2 minus. This is a little bit decreasing and further decreasing in that S2, 2 minus, sorry, increasing. So, these red ones, this is the one, this is the one, this is further increasing. So, as you go down, as the, as the sulfur content is reduced, this uh, S2, 2 minus and S2 minus, those components are increased. So, what is decreased is this blue one that is bridged S22 minus is greater here, somewhat less here, much less here. So, the bridged bonds are decreased and then SO bond is increased, S single bond O is increased, S2 minus uh, uh, parts are increased, but the bridged one is decreased. Now, from this you can make out from the spectrum by deconvolution what type of different uh, nature of the molybdenum sulfide compounds formed in a reaction that you took certain ratio of molybdenum to sulfur and certain experimental conditions. So, you can get the ratio also of all that. So, this is a full level of analysis of when you make some compounds from certain kind of a reactions particularly in the solid state reactions of that. I hope this is quite well understood to you and the principles I am explaining through uh, you know examples both the principles, concepts, applications I am explaining through these examples in that. So, all are uh, involved in that. Let us move on to the next uh, slide in this. So, we have uh, again these are the tables which you can google get it very easily. These are all 2 p 3 by 2, 2 p 3 by 2. So, you can compare and for a particular metal ion uh, here the, for metal compounds not metal ion. So, manganese, manganese sulfide, manganese dichloride, manganese uh, trifluoride, manganese oxide, etc. And overall, you can say as the oxidation state of the molybdenum, I am sorry, metal center, in this case, manganese center increases that. Uh, let me, let us have this 2 p of this is coming of the manganese coming 638 to 645. Now, if you look at for iron, it is going from 700 to 710, 713. And if you go to the cobalt it goes from 778 to 784 and if you go to the uh, nickel it comes from 850 to 860. If you go to copper 930 to 936, if you go to uh, zinc 1020 to 1025 what do you understand from that. So, the 2 p binding energies are increasing as you go from manganese to iron to the cobalt to the nickel, to the copper, to the zinc. So, what does it mean? That means, they are little bit more buried as you go towards this and this you understand because you have a greater and greater the, the nuclear effective charge. The effective nuclear charge is increasing we know very well from the very basic inorganic chemistry that we see the trend exactly the trend that is being followed. So, that means, the you can identify the metal also from the XPS. If they are coming from the same uh, 2 p, then you can easily identify the binding energies. Of the, so, this is a manganese metal or is it a iron metal or is it a cobalt metal or nickel, copper, zinc we can identify because their values are shifting. So, therefore, things binding energies are this. So, all we are looking at uh, the binding energies of 2 p. So, the metal uh, 2p. So, this is uh, 3d transition metals. So, this is what you are looking at. So, that is the manganese uh, range is less than the iron, is less than the cobalt, is less than the nickel, less than the uh, copper, less than the zinc. You can see that. And this is where the, uh, the, the metal 2p uh, XPS or binding energy. So, binding energy makes this one. So, that means you can identify when you look at the compound there is some confusion this value can tell you which is the metal ion. Suppose, sometimes you may have a mixed metal ion compounds. 
So, and then among for each of the metal ion different oxides, different sulfides may have been formed. So, therefore, that also you can resolve provided you resolve the spectrum, you do a high resolution XPS spectrum and then deconvolute and then you can get it. Now, I do not need to go through the values of each case. So, overall trend you can see that uh, as the oxidation state increases this uh, binding energy aspect will also increase and then and this is O on XPS ok. So, the binding energy. So, the range of the binding energies do differ. So, almost here uh, for the manganese 650 range and it goes to 1025 range when you come to the zinc case in kind of a case. I hope that is understandable and let us look at uh, some additional aspects. So, now we have looked at uh, quite a much of the organic examples in the previous class and uh, uh, ok just let me uh, bring back to you all this. We have looked at uh, the organic examples by simple uh, organic uh, molecule where you can identify kindly look at the slide where you can identify the, the carbon 1s with different surroundings. So, this carbon uh, with a carbon surrounding, carbon with an oxygen surrounding, carbon with a double bond oxygen, carbon with a fluorine etcetera you are able to make out. So, that means carbon with carbon you can aliphatic carbon then uh, carbon with a OH carbon with other carbonyls etcetera. So, in a in a polymer you have different kinds of situations and that also you are able to make out what kind of a species are attached directly to the what kind of a centers are attached directly to the carbon that you can make out because in polymers you always have this particular kind of a compounds forming uh, in that. So, you can see and these are all explained. So, you can get the compositions as well uh, in this even if they are put into the intercalated into the layers etcetera. So, you can make out. So, the uh, the carbon in this particular case the carbon which is attached to the carbon dioxide CO2 and the carbon that is attached to the carbonyls oxygens they all differ. So, therefore, you can easily identify. So, you can get their quantitative things as well. This is another thing a reaction is done uh, between uh, this moiety and this uh, catalyst and this at that temperature. And also uh, you will see a different catalyst as I have shown on the next slide. So, when you make these compounds different types of compounds are formed based on the nitrogen 1s XPS. You can find whether oxidized, quaternary type, pyrrolic type, pyridinic type all of those and you can get the ratio. So, therefore, you can say the, the kind of a framework that is formed what level of each of this and also you can make with a tin as the uh, tin uh, halide as the uh, catalyst, copper halide as the catalyst, zinc halide as the catalyst. So, you can see the role of the catalyst also in all of these so you can make out all of them. So, this is another reaction which is done and components are uh, identified ok. So, these are all we have rationalized we have looked at, but uh, generally it is not easy to look at the oxygen spectrum only few extremes you can identify, but otherwise you cannot. And today's class we have looked at the uh, inorganic uh, compounds with the silicon different kinds of metal oxides that are there and uh, metal sulfides all we have looked at and all of these. I, I think in the in the next class we will look at uh, the composites nano composites and some uh, you know reactions done on the surface of the catalyst heterogeneous catalyst and then we will see what kind of a things that we need to overall look at this ok. So, for this uh, class these are good enough and but I wanted I would like to uh, recall your attention in just going through all this a very simple exercise that you need to do the basic principles are very simple and clearer. So, thank you very much.